From TVLine.com, Emmys hits all-time audience low. Good. Wow. <laughs> Good. The end is nigh. Did you watch the it? I, 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 I didn't even know what happened. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. I, I watched it. For, for those of you that are listening right now, send in your chats and super chats. Did you know the Emmys even happened? Like one or... I did not I did know. Not <laughs> I had no clue. And, and it was not in anyone's feeds. I mean, yeah. you would see the... You know, Nobody typically was tweeting see the about clips. it. Nobody was tweeting about it. I watched it because I feel like I have to watch those kinds of things. Sorry. It was... I'm sorry you had to do that. I'm so sorry. I, I, there was a moment where I, I told my wife, Adriana, I'm like, we, we, we can't do this. She says, no, no, we got to keep watching. We got to keep watching. <laughs> it was a cringe fest just one thing after the other just it's so infused into ev and saturated just uh, it's just saturated into everything that they do the awards they give the shows they give shows that should have easily won were lost out to the most woke show i mean it's just i, I think it's just part of, uh, of that why the reason why those ratings are so low that's we have such a great opportunity right now well i, I kind of think that uh the system is collapsing and it's more apparent uh, to me than I think to the average person for a few reasons. I don't know if it's going to recover. So we got a bunch of Times Square billboards. We did this over the summer. We, we, we went nuts. We had like 25 ads just like dominating the space. It was awesome. And a lot of people were like, that's crazy. How could you afford that? And then I'm just like, bro, it costs 20 bucks to run an ad in Times Square. One time. Yeah. So like, and you can get even cheaper. There's some, some smaller ads, like still big screens, like $7. And they'll say, like, you got to buy at least 20 of them or whatever. So it's a couple hundred bucks and then it'll run for the day. That's a lot cheaper than people realize. And the reason, you know, it's done. Like, the foot traffic is down. These, there's no impact anymore. There's no cultural references. There's, like, there's, there's no cultural cohesion. So even having the ads doesn't do anything. It's just a statement being made. And I thought about it. And I'm like, here we are. We did it. We, we're here in the cent center of American culture. And we made our point. But we were only able to because the system has decayed to the point where the, it, it used to be that there were so many big companies with tens of millions of dollars that they were all competing for these spaces. The prices were super high. Now, nobody wants them. Now, they're de like some of the bill billboards in there are turned off. Hmm. So, so it, yeah, off. Interesting. And I'm like, hey, that one that's off. Can I get that one? We ended up getting the entire billboard to ourselves. Wow. So we also ended up hitting number two on billboard digital sales. And you know what? You know what? It, we, we sold 12,520 songs in one week. That's number two. 12,000. Interesting. That's it. Interesting. It used to be 100, 200, 500,000 sold. Now, I, I get it. We're in a different kind of economy with streaming music. But it's not just about, uh, you know, nobody's encouraging. I mean, you, you can check this up to the rental economy and you will own nothing and you'll be happy. But my point is, we are able to stand atop the ruins. We're, we're able to be like, look how well we're doing only because the system has collapsed. Like if we had a show this big 10 years ago, we would not be getting top, you know, singles and music or, or Times Square. But because the system has just broken down and fallen apart, we can climb on the rubble and be like, I am king of the rubble. And everyone's like, yeah. And then we're like, ha ha. I and would have thought those would have gone for tens of thousands of dollars that, that, that you could not get out of an ad for uh, less than $100,000 for something like well, that. Well, so like if you want to get the biggest, the big tower, you know, they do it on like a week by week basis and it's like 600 grand per week. But most of the billboards, you know, they're big, but they're not that big. It's like you can have a run all day for a couple grand and you can actually schedule like 20 ad placements to, to span over one, you know, one day over, you know, they'll play like once every other minute for a few hours and it'll cost you 200 bucks. It's just that the demand is gone. Not, not only that, but like small businesses have been wiped out. So ad revenue is collapsing. I just, I look at the Emmys and it's like American culture is being erased. These things that we used to all be interested in and talk about just gone. And without that, what happens? You end up, I'll just say, and in a big leap, civil war. Huh. Because when you have completely disparate cultures that don't like each other, that don't care about each other, and aren't concerned about offending each other, they can say whatever they want about each other. It used to be that you were like, okay, I better not say that, you know, what, what's, what's the famous apocryphal quote for Michael Jordan? Conservatives buy shoes too, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Why don't you get, uh, conservatives buy shoes too, man. Okay. You know, nowadays, it's like, I don't want their money anyway. So I'll rag on them and hopefully that'll make more of the woke left to buy my stuff or the, or the inverse. Now you've got Democrats and Republicans refusing to debate each other. 
You've got uh, Katie Hobbs. She won't debate Carrie Lake. But you got, uh, uh, who is it? Herschel Walker, is that his name? He's not going to debate. Yeah. Uh, um, Warnock. Warnock. There yeah. you go. And so the, the, the reality is, what's to be gained? The hyperpolarization is so intense, you only face risk by actually coming together. There, so a Republican's going to come out and be like, I'm not going to get any of these Democrat votes. Why bother talking to them? And the Democrats are going to be like, I'm not going to get a Republican vote. Why bother talking to them? Because it's not even about the, the, the policy. It's about Democrats are bad or, or Republicans are bad. In which case, it is what it is. The chips have fallen where they're going to fall. Let's see who wins the election. The, everything is fractured. And it is sooner or later, people are going to just demonize each other to the point where they're fighting in the streets. I mean, it probably already happened. It's like already happening, actually. It, we're seeing it. I mean, I don't know if it's just because of social media that we're seeing so much more of this kind of violence happening or, you know, in Los Angeles. I mean, you can't go a day without seeing a, somebody walk into a restaurant while people are eating with gun, a gun and putting a gun to their head mm. and taking money from them. I, I think you're right. The social cohesion. There is no what event on a national scale now is considered something that is kind of must see. That's this cultural kind of phenomenon that brings everybody together. Even NFL, even the NFL now is broken down i mean yeah. we, we we the the whole advertising thing was used to be a huge thing where we would sit down and watch the advertisements which advertisement is the best and now it's just we're constantly being bombarded with the wokeness on any of these things so there's no cohesion there's no culture and a lot of that had to do i believe with this illegal immigration problem that we've been dealing with now since at least the 70s where there is no there's a there's no entry that where people have to say, okay, this is what American is, and this is what I've bought into, and I'm going, and I'm signing on to this. I am buying into the American dream, into the American uh, culture, into the, what it means to be American. We've lost that entirely. We lost it through Pledge of Allegiances in schools, where we used to sing these kinds of things on a regular basis. When I was growing up, now you don't see those kinds of things happen so much anymore. The, we've lost this cultural cohesion. And I think that you're right. It is leading to more and more violence. And social media is helping instigate it and trigger it even more. The next big thing to just shatter and destroy American culture will be when they have, in like the NFL and the NBA, forced diversity. When they say stuff like, hey, these rules are arbitrary. Why don't we mandate that half the team be women? Hmm. Sooner or later. It's going to happen. Wokeness is, has, has already hit sports and the weird left call has already hit sports. Sooner or later, they're going to come out and be like, you know, we made these rules up, right? It's discriminatory that your team is all male. Yeah, and then so, you're going to have the NBA. It's like going to be half men and half women. And it's going to be the sports the dudes thing is, are going to be the one doing it, all the work. It's so much harder to get away with it in sports. I just saw a, another meme to, to reference the memes you're talking about. I saw a meme where this woman broke the, the deadlifting record and it was 600 and... 34 pounds or something and then somebody quickly followed that up with yeah a man's record is 1100 pounds yeah, it is. Yeah. i mean there's Same. so the difference between men and women when it comes to these kinds of things i mean and women have their thing i prefer watching women tennis than than men's tennis because the rallying it's just a little bit more of an exciting game to watch so there's not to say there isn't a place for women in sports what have you but the, the difference between the, the the sexes when it comes to sports I, is just drastic i think the tennis thing you know I, I don't really mind i think it's entertaining when it's like serena or who was that other guy uh, when they smash their, their racket and scream and, and rage? Yeah. <laughs> like oh, Mac and Roe. Mac and Roe. Yeah, that's yeah. what we're here for. Everybody knows. Nobody actually enjoys watching tennis. We're just waiting for them <laughs> to right. smash their racket. It's like, I'm kidding, by the way, but it's like NASCAR. They say that everyone's just waiting for a car to crash or something. And I'm like, no, not really. You know, because I don't think that happens all the time. No. Yeah, but yeah, man. Uh, so, so according to this TV line article, it says, that Emmys hit the an all time audience low, opposite the most watched Monday Night Football since '09. I think I think they're saying Monday Night Football, right? Yeah. M N F. Yeah. Who was it? Was that the Browns? I don't know, we'll but uh, I was talking to somebody about the state of culture and in, in media a while ago, and they said that sports will be the last to go, because sports is something that can't be rerun. Like you can watch an old game to see what's up, but for the most part, you need the live here and now show for what matters. With TV shows, I'm watching Breaking Bad right now. I'm on season five, yep. and it's a it's a ten year old show. Hell's so most people have already seen it, but but I'm like, oh, I, if I've seen it, it's new to me. Yeah, you were saying you can't, we can't you can't go watch old NFL games and be like, ooh, mm -hmm. like you could, I guess. You but. were saying you watched the Emmys, Patrick, and I was like, uh, my thought was, did you watch it on 1.5 speed? Because I have no interest. <laughs> but that would mean you had to wait till it's already done to go back and watch no, it at 1.5 speed. We watched it live. There's just no. 
there's no rush to the show anymore because I'd rather watch it later faster. It, it just didn't it didn't represent America and the American experience at all. And they they've gone overboard. You know the whole thing with the the um, Oscars so white. I think Hollywood really took that to to heart. And it, it, honestly, it felt like we were watching the BET Awards. It was just this crazy recorrection. And I've talked to to screenwriters about this the way Hollywood is. They are getting fed up with it. They can't work anymore. I and mean, we're talking about very successful showrunners of huge shows on HBO and NBC and what have you that they and I've been hearing this complaint since 2012. So this has been going on for 10 years there where they cannot get work if their skin is white. Mm. And so you're seeing that this this constant infiltration in Hollywood. That's why we keep going. I keep going back to the same thing. We're we're in, we have a great this gold rush right now in regards to being able to get in there and make stuff because people are dying for it. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.